Hello, this is my presentation project over the philosophy and Star Wars and the universe of Star Wars and the franchise of Star Wars as a whole. First, let's talk about the creator, George Lucas, the man behind creating Star Wars and developing this culture of um, wisdom and knowledge and ideas that are implemented into these films and in today's world are seen as the one of the greatest franchises to ever exist in the media and in this case George Lucas was influenced by a lot of Western philosophy ideas two of them being uh, Taoism or Taoism and Buddhism the other one being Pantheism. These are the most relevant ideas philosophically um, in Star Wars and the franchise that it's grown to be. Let's start off by talking about uh, Taoism. Taoism is yin and yang, uh, light and dark, bad and good. Uh, one can say God and the devil. Those are... Um, Yin and Yang, those are partners, are opposite towards each other's, basically. And Star Wars is no different. You hear about the Jedi, the Sith, you know, the dark side, the light side. You think about, um, you know, the political views that that Star Wars also has. You think of the Empire, you think of the Rebellion, you think of the Republic and the Separatists. Uh, these are very important and will be discussed throughout this presentation and throughout the films they're elaborated on they're explored on um, you can start to see why uh, George Lucas did this he created these ideas of of opposites and within those opposites uh, they represent uh, two views but at the end of the day those two views are trying to find peace. Those two views are trying to find balance and peace. So that's why it's important to think of Taoism and Star Wars and why it's so relevant in it. Again, uh, yin and yang, dark and light. In this instance, the Jedi and the Sith, the light side and the dark side of the Force. These are all yin and yang towards each other. Um, and it's almost a balance, you know, specifically with with the Jedi, the Jedi always talk about finding balance within the Force. They talk about, you know, for example, Anakin. Anakin is, an, Anakin is a character in Star Wars that is supposedly the chosen one, one who's supposed to be balanced to the Force between the dark side and the light side of the Force. Another uh, way we can see Taoism in Star Wars is the political views. Again, you have the Empire of the Rebellion, you have the Republic and the Separatists. Um, these are all political views that are um, opposites of each other. You know, the opposite one, the, the Republic wants peace. The Separatists want to control a lot of things. They're opposite in viewpoints. But at the end of the day, um, both parties are trying to make uh, peace within the galaxy. They're trying to find that balance within them. And throughout Star Wars, we have these counter arguments of how the galaxy should be treated how the galaxy should be and it's important to know that those examples are uh, excuse me taoism moving on from that you have the most relevant and in my opinion the most important one in the, the star wars franchise and that is buddhism 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 is a life of suffering but in that suffering, uh, you're gaining experience um, within your life to find inner peace, or in this case, within the Buddhist or the Buddhism teachings, or uh, through any lessons and lectures, um, literature. It's that nirvana, that enlightenment, that peace, um, which shall be discussed throughout these slides again, specifically with. Um, the Jedi. So let's move on to that. 
the Jedi, the Jedi Order more specifically. Um, in Star Wars, um, they're often often looked at as peacekeepers. Uh, their concentration and attachment to the Force is what makes them Jedi and what makes them um, almost like monks um, to the universe. Um, these individuals are uh, spiritual. They are spiritual towards the Force, towards peace, um, towards finding that uh, connection with the Force. And within every Jedi, they want to find balance, and they want to uh, pass away within the Force. And one good example is Yoda, uh, who's this character in this slide. Uh, Yoda is a master in the Force, a uh, master Jedi, and he teaches his pupils meditation, mindfulness, independence, um, all things that are clearly from... Um, Buddhist teachings and George Lucas implements this character very well because Yoda is very uh, interesting and is very crucial um, towards the Star Wars universe he's the one that teaches Luke the ways of the force he's the one that is the grandmaster of all Jedi in this case and he's he's able to do this in many ways and is able to do this through literatures through meditation through lessons and so that's why Yoda it's a very good example of a of a monk. You know. So let's move on to other examples of people in the franchise being that or ideas that represent this. Again, the Jedi, similar to you know Buddhist practices or the culture of it, um, they try to find uh, nirvana or inner peace um, within the Force. And the Force is something that will be discussed later on, but it's something that's metaphysical. It's an entity, but they let that entity flow through them. They let that experience and balance and uh, everlasting peace trying to go through their body. And, you know, they want to pass away going with the Force rather than against it. Um, furthermore, again, uh, a good example Another good Jedi that's a good example of these teachings is Luke Skywalker here in this image fighting Darth Vader in the Emperor rooms. Um, he's a good example of another, you know, Buddhist or a monk. In this case, he learned from Yoda. He took the les lessons that he learned, and he's teaching them to other students. And he has find he has found balance within the Force. Even through everything he's gone through, finding out his father is Darth Vader, you know his uh, his sister is Leia, that um, the Emperor is forcing him to to join him. Uh, if you've seen the films, you know these um, plots, but you know he doesn't give in to that those emotions, that dark side. He finds balance. He makes rational decisions, and he finds everlasting peace once he dies. Which is why it's so important to know these characters as these monks and these uh, peacekeepers. So moving on from this, we'll be discussing about the Force and how the Force kind of connects to the Jedi and what the Force really is in the franchise. Now, uh, painting atheism and how it has influenced Star Wars or how George Lucas influenced, influenced it into these films is simply the Force is an entity. The Force is everlasting. The Force is what uh, goes through everyone and goes through every living being. And in this case, um, in our culture, and we can say that that's God. We can say that God is the ent entity that transcends us. You know, It's the ultimate uh, entity. And the essence of God is important to us all, you know. So in that, in this case, that is similar to how the Force is within the Star Wars universe. Again, what is the Force? It's an energy. It creates life. Um, it binds the universe together. And it's interesting because the entity um, doesn't pick sides. The Force is not going to choose sides. Rather, 
the individuals that are gifted the force, that are gifted the force, the powers of the force, decide what path they will choose to go down on. Those are the individuals that decide what they will use this force, this entity that flows through them, whether they use it for good or for evil, for balance and good deeds or for personal gain. And this force has been crucial throughout all films of the Star Wars franchise and through every type of media that it's media that's been through, the force is always gonna be there. That's why it's so important to recognize the force and make that connection. Again, we we recall back to the dark side and the light side. You have the dark dark side of the force and the light side of the force. Um, in this case, you know, dark dark um, dark force users or Sith, as we like to call them in Star Wars, um, they they are gifted. They're strong with the force, but they're strong with the force to the point where they use it for their own personal gain. They use it for selfish needs. They use it for power. They use it for strength. As for light side users or the Jedi. They use them for making good deeds, rational decisions, finding balance, meditating with the force. They make it a culture to them, you know. And a good example you have in this image: you have Darth Vader, you have Luke Skywalker, you have Obi Wan, you have Darth Maul. If you know these characters, you know who I'm talking about. You know who these characters are. You know how important they are in displaying these um, uh, paths. You know, you have Luke. Luke is you know, a Jedi master towards the end of the films. And he becomes a great teacher, Obi-Wan, you know, great Jedi. And he's able to find peace with the Force. And for the Sith side, you have Darth Vader, one, an individual, not even man, more machine, who uses the Force, the dark side of the Force, to tap into his emotions and to his own personal gain to satisfy the cold heartedness that he is and same with Darth Maul. Darth Maul wanted power. He wanted uh, selfish gains for himself. He wanted to prove anything that he can that he, he wanted to prove that he can have whatever he wanted to and without a doubt um, it cost him. It cost him his life um, but these characters are very important. These characters, if you know them, you know who they are, you know how important they are to the franchise, and that's all I'll say about them. In conclusion, uh, George Lucas really made a franchise worth looking into. He made a franchise that was influenced by a lot of Western cultures, or Western philosophy in this case, and you know, you can look at many interviews with him, um, you can look at you know, articles and all that that will be listed, uh, listed on, on my work side. But Star Wars has always been influenced by philosophical ideas. And without a doubt, without those philo philo philosophical ideas, you cannot have Star Wars. You cannot have that franchise that has been here for decades. Um, without those ideas, without those lessons and teachings, without, without the Jedi and, and the Sith and the Force and all these characters and, and political views or anything like that, you cannot have Star Wars. And it's important to recognize these ideas and to give credit to the creator, to give credit to these people that have given these stories. You know, I've been watching Star Wars since I was a kid, and here I am still watching it. And not only that, but learning about it, understanding why these characters act the way they are. So with that said, you know, this is my project. This is, these are the ideas that I found within the franchise. And these last two slides will be my work cited. Uh, there's 10 of them, so there's five on each page. But they're all listed, numbered, not listed. They're numbered to so you can know which ones I did, which, you know, uh, sources I used to quote from um, for my slides or how I got my information or how, what's similar information, all that. So I have the first one, you have one, two, three, four, five. The last one, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
There you go. That'll be it.